Fifty Shades Dark Eyes, Fifty Shades of fucking shite. You'd have a more titillating experience watching a stray dog hump your granny's leg than you ever would get from watching this garbage. Jesus Christ, I expected it to be bad, but I didn't expect it to be so fucking boring. To everyone who pushed me into this on Twitter, you should know that it's because of you lot, I ended up having the worst cinema experience of my life. As if the movie wasn't bad enough, I only had to go and see it by me bastard self, the single solo male in a screening full of couples, middle-aged women, and me mate's mum. That was a fun conversation. Hello Susan, fancy bumping into you here. You here for the skin flick too? Why yes, I am looking forward to the nipple clamps. I was fortunate enough to not be sat next to her though, but because I was holding out for some kind soul to suffer through this horror with me, I ended up booking my tickets super late, which meant I was two rows from the front in a packed out screening right next to the entranceway. So literally everyone who came into the screen passed by me with a judging glare that said, oh look, we've spotted the heavy mouth breather. There's always one in the audience. Eventually a couple took position next to me so I wasn't so obviously alone though having said that I'm not sure I was much better off because I don't remember paying for the 3D experience but boy those two went the extra mile and made sure I got it. And then just when I thought things couldn't get any worse the fucking film started. If there was a cinematic equivalent to the AIDS virus then I'm pretty sure this is it. This movie is so abysmal that if my name was in the credits and people asked me what I did for a living, I would lie and tell them I wank into a webcam for old strangers on the internet because I'd genuinely be less ashamed. I'm honestly embarrassed for everyone involved and you might be thinking, ah come on man, it's not bad, it's just a trashy bit of kinky fun. And you know, heading in, that's what I thought too, but it isn't even good at being that. When going into a porno, I expect them to at least be half decent at the fucking porn portion, but I've had more erotic experiences comparing car insurance prices. I don't know how you make scenes where two extremely attractive people shag such a dull chore, but these two actors go at it with all the sizzling chemistry of two goats fucking on the Discovery Channel. It's like someone stripped the clothes off a Barbie doll and an action man and just mashed them together like a fumbling child while saying, now kiss. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty things just as bad in the film that I will be mentioning, but I want to lay it on thick with the sex stuff because that's the only sodding thing they had to get right. It's the main draw for fuck's sake. The entire selling point of the whole thing is, ooh it's sexy, ooh it's taboo, ooh it's dangerous. Really? Because I've seen more questionable shit when watching the sodden tweenies. I mean, ha way. I don't think this film knows what naughty fun is. The only thing dirty in this entire production is the cringe-inducing dialogue. There's a scene where Christy in our love interest goes down on Anna, our protagonist, and she's all like, Hey, I was trying to be romantic, and then you go and distract me with your kinky fuckery. Two points. Firstly, Ugh. Who the fuck let that line happen? And two, Kinky fuckery. Kinky fuckery. What? Cunnilingus. Fucking oral. That thing a lot of couples practice before they even have sex. Jesus, Anna, if you think that's kinky, go and shag around a bit, lass. We live in a world where pop songs about blowjobs top music charts, and most of America's favourite television show features recurring graphic incest. A bit of tongue tickling on your twat is hardly sodden edgy, you dafty. And all of it's like that. Clumsy, lame, and totally unself-aware. They treat every single bit of ugh, kinky fuckery like it's so damn scandalous. Anna's looks consistently trying to evoke schoolgirl-like giggles. It's all, Anna, these are minority toys for minority deeds and they come from minority room. Oh, Mr. Grey, you're so naughty. <laughs> kinky fuckery. I mean, I... They hoist some sex toys in every now and then, but what does it matter if after a while every smut scene always ends in the same PG-13 missionary grunt fest? There's more plain vanilla in this movie than there is in a sodden McFlurry. Kinky fuckery. Hadaway and shite, man. You're less marquee to sad and more Mills and Boone. Me bloody bathroom's filthier than ye, and I've only cleaned the bugger yesterday. And I'll tell you where else it messes up. Where the hell's the cock shot? I mean the target audience is straight women but the person most sexualised here is Anna. Why we're still shooting that shit through the male gaze? She's the one that's always naked, she's the one that's in all the sexy lingerie, she's the one the camera lingers on as oil drips down her bare tits. I was so confused watching it because I, Christian whaps his top off a good few times but other than a scene where he works out, it mostly makes use of Anna's assets and I'm thinking, eh? Am I missing something here? Hang on, I thought this was supposed to be hardcore porn for women. 
Why have they made softcore porn for men? Are they trying to appeal to blokes so we'll see it? Because if I was a woman seeing this, I'd be disappointed. And if I was a man, I'd just gone on the internet, you know, Pornhub exists. I mean, know your target audience and throw them a bone, will you? Literally in this case. Look, I get it, a dick isn't the best subject for the camera. They aren't pretty like. You know, some of the worst ones look like shy, elongated turtle heads slowly being coaxed out of a pink sweater vest. But how where? Cinematographers, if you can't manage to get a single sexy shot of a dick, if you can't get the right angle and lighting to re-envision it as being not a sociopathic amphibian, but rather a majestic, untamable beast reminiscent of the proud and mighty necks of the Brachiosaurus, then what are you even in this business for? There's the door, see yourselves out, I think Asylum is recruiting you talentless fucks. Now, you might have noticed in all this time I've spent spitefully shaming the shitty standard of the smutty sex, I haven't mentioned a plot at all, and if you're wondering why that is, it's because the fucking isn't one. This entire adventure is just a series of inconsequential shit happening between quickies so and sexy, I'm pretty sure me knob turned into an any at one point, and then the credits roll. I'm not even joking, it's like, they get back together, and then they fuck. They go to a party, and then they fuck. They go to his house, and then they fuck. Each time with the enthusiasm and personality of cardboard cutouts. Holy Christ, these are some dreadfully unlikable human beings. She has all the charisma of a damp piece of toast, and he's a controlling and emotionally abusive arsehole. And I don't mean controlling in that sexy dom slash subway, like all of the stuff in the sex scenes is inoffensive other than the fact that they're about as erotic as prostate exams. I'm talking about the stuff outside of that, where he's just a grade A worm. He tries to force money on her to make her financially codependent, he tries to carry her through the street like a spoiled brat when she refuses to come with him, and when she texts him to say she's heading to New York for work, he texts back, My answer is no. Ari, dad? She wasn't fucking asking, like. Sure, he can be Hollywood-style sweet with her at times, but it doesn't change the fact that he's a scummy little shit gibbon on other occasions. Oh, but it's okay because women wrote and directed it. So? He's still a minging little skeezy bastard, and I, the guy he forbids her from saying just suddenly turns out to be a rapist so he gets an all clear, and oh he's 50 shades of fucked up from a dramatic childhood and that's why he's all sexually demanding, but fuck off, that's just narrative cop out to explain away cuntiness. Now look though, I know it's hugely popular with a lot of women though, so far be it from me to tell you what you enjoy, I'm not gonna pull that ban this sick filth crap because as someone who plays and watches a lot of violent video games and movies that would be massively hypocritical and I recognise that you can enjoy something without necessarily agreeing with all of the content and ideologies it presents, but just honestly, I would like to point out that some of the bullshit this shithead does is not cool. Watch it by all means and have fun with it, you know, go on a ladies night out or whatever, I totally get why you'd want to see this film for the banter, but don't think that any bloke who says shit like, for once in your life just do as you're told, is any relationship quality to aspire to. That's not sexy or romantic, that's just being a prick. Also, he's just a melodramatic twat in general. He draws a lipstick over his nipples at one point while saying, these are my boundaries. And I'd have been laughing my ass off at this a ridiculous amount, but I didn't want to put the couple next to me off their adventures in second base. Those crazy kids, sure hope it works out for them. This wasn't the only instance of pathetic melodrama either. His whole BDSM fetish is framed as some horrible psychopathic trait that needs to be cured by Anna's presence and exists as a result of a traumatic childhood. Aw, oh, fucking hell, cue the sad violins. How patronising is that, by the way, that she needs to change and cure him? Can people not just be into a bit of spanking, like? This all comes to a climax with the fucking worst line in cinema history as he bellows at the movie's barely appearing villain, I guess? Elena, you taught me how to fuck. Anna taught me how to love. Jesus, wept. The teenagers on Riverdale are less over the top. Oh, and in case that's not enough melodrama, well, spoiler alert, but five minutes from the end, Christian is in a helicopter crash, which we're all very sad to see he survive, and this is so inconsequential and immediate in its resolution that there's never any tension. You could argue that's fine because the film's only real competition is porn, but porn actually has more tension. I mean, at least with porn you get some mystery. Will the plumber ever fix those leaky pipes? I'm really concerned these poor lasses are going to end up without necessary kitchen utilities, you know? With porn, I want answers to these questions. But when the big question is, <gasps> did Christian survive that crash? I don't care. 
All in all, it's absolutely piss poor, and honestly, I'm barely scratching the surface of its flaws, but I've already gave this movie more time than it's worth, and it doesn't matter anyway, it's still going to make more money than the combined wealth of most kings, and nothing I or anyone can say will stop that because it's critic proof. I just feel sorry for the target audience because if this is the best porn you got, then someone needs to make you all better porn. And it's truly ironic that this whole flick was put together by a company called Perfect World Pictures, because in my perfect world, this picture wouldn't fucking exist.